The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary? and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own king and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. There are few times in the Gospel when we find the heart of Jesus sad. The encounter with the ten lepers when only one Samaritan leper returned, but nine did not return to offer thanks to God. The moment when the soldier of the high priest hit him during the Passion with this the same gaze, Jesus almost not understanding what happened. And here, seeing the lack of faith in his own people. It's true that he understands everything because he's God made man. But also, it means that there are some, some sorrows in the heart of Christ. They are the sufferings, the spines that enter into his heart. After this moment in the visit to Nazareth, we can imagine that there were other conversations with the disciples leaving Nazareth and above all with the Blessed Virgin Mary. The only time in the Gospels when Jesus receives the title Son of Mary. Son of Mary. And we can contemplate the communion in sufferings, in the spines, in the thorns, oh, sorry, the thorns in his heart. How can we respond to the sufferings of the Lord? We know that we as sinners, we have caused those sufferings. But hopefully we're in a moment now that we are trying not to offend the Lord more but rather console the Lord more. That is, there are many sufferings of his heart at this moment in history. Many contradictions to his presence in the Eucharist. When, how many tabernacles in, in towns don't receive people who visit him in the Mass Sunday? In this moment when we can return, we are returning and so the heart of the the sorrows of the heart of Christ continue in the Nazareths of this day. It's the vocation of consoling his heart, which is the response of love to these sufferings. We cannot change much, but in the culture, but we know that we can change our direction, our priorities and our choices, that to say that, that, Lord, in this day, in this moment, I want to console you. I don't want to say words that don't have value. I don't want to lose time with superficialities. We don't, I, I don't want to enter into a selfish world, interiorly or exteriorly. No, I want to be with you, with your heart, to console you, repair, 
and a door. And adore you. And this passage of the gospel, there is no conversation between the disciples and Jesus. And, and leaving Nazareth, we don't know what they have contemplated together. But it's also another indication. How can we console the Lord? Entering in the silences of his heart, accompanying with our silence, offering our love for his heart. And perhaps Jesus didn't have a house in Nazareth. But Lord, you have my, my heart. You have all of my heart. We listen to the words of our mother founders. The silence softens the human heart because it allows us to find ourselves. It allows us to see ourselves in the truth with our beauties and with our need of purification and beautifying the heart. In the silence, we're capable of seeing everything as it is, not how I would like it to be for my own satisfaction, selfish satisfaction, or so that my own project may be fulfilled like I want. In silence, we can, even in suffering, we can let go everything that separates us from the plan of God or impedes us from being the fullness of what we are called to be in his plan. In the silence of consolation and reparation, we are prepared to abandon ourselves to the will of God in whatever way that it is manifested. In silence, we learn to be men and women of true joy, that it's not an exaggerated emotional happiness, but rather a profound experience of fullness and gratitude. Perhaps, dear brothers and sisters, at this moment when we are leaving Nazareth, in this moment of silence with him, among so many pains and sufferings, we want to console the Lord with our silences. And in this path of silence and reparation, contemplation and adoration, we also enter into his joy, which is to enter into a walk amidst all his sufferings and difficulties under the gaze of our Heavenly Father. What is our joy? Uh, who is our joy? All for the heart of Jesus through the heart of Mary.